It's everything we want American soccer to be. It truly is. Every single week, no matter when the game is, even if it's a weekday, the stadium will be absolutely packed. Sections of fans that literally will not will not sit for an instant the entire match. Something you will not see at other American sports. It's just an incredible city. Um, it's so beautiful. The people here are great people, and uh, what they've done in the soccer community, I mean, just blows my mind. We, we really feel like we can become the Barcelona of the United States. It can be unbelievably noisy. I mean, they will start singing at the first whistle and won't stop till we're nice. We want to compete with the rest of the world. It is the best American sports experience currently. Welcome to the Blue Hell. The Cauldron is, you know, they're they're right up there with the best in the, in the league in, in regards to the fan support. I'd love to uh, to sit sit there one day. They're a fun, rowdy group, and you know, you go to other places around the world, and even in the MLS, and you just kind of get a negative vibe from a lot of the the supporter section. But it's not like that at the Cauldron. They have some good cheers, and uh, uh, those guys have to be tired after the game because they're they're on their feet, they're jumping up and down all game long. They don't stop. Yeah. For 90 minutes. Right before the whistle hits, you'll feel the energy and you'll feel it all through the game. They change the, the culture and the atmosphere and uh, it makes it, you know, for one of the best stadiums in the U.S. Sporting Park is definitely the place to be in Kansas City right now. You know, it's, it's an honor to play play in that stadium every week with, with 21,000 fans sold out every game. It's just growing here too and you know we sell, I think we've sold out you know 28 home games in a row or something like that so I mean it's, it's popping in there and it's good. Like everyone is welcome and I think that's just a part of how Kansas City is. Everybody here is, is very welcoming and, uh, and it's a great place to play. Right after kickoff, our president will be in the center aisle right behind me. No. And he's going to stand there for 10, 15 minutes and be a part of the cauldron for the first part of the game. And then yeah. he goes over and sits in his seats. Yeah. So when the president of your club is doing that, it's insane. Because I look up and I see him chanting and drinking a beer, standing yeah. next to the fans. And it's amazing. I can't really even have imagined what it would be like when I was growing up. Uh, I, I had always hoped that it would get big like this, um, but again, I mean, it, it's just a, a big honor to, to play for my hometown team that I grew up supporting. I was here before the ownership group was actually here, so I was here when the, the Hunts uh, were the previous owners, and they also own the Kansas City Chiefs, which is the uh, NFL team that's here. And so we were kind of like the, the red-headed stepchildren of the Chiefs. If we kicked the ball in their field, they'd yell at us, and. And it was just, you know, we always kind of had our heads down and we were just off to the side and we played in, the, in Arrowhead Stadium which holds, you know, a ton of people and yeah. we didn't get the crowds to really fill it up to, to, you know, make it loud. I remember they used to, our supporter section used to have a microphone over it to make it louder. After my rookie year, the ownership group came in and they made some changes right away. They built this facility. And once they built this facility, I was like, okay, these guys might be for real because this is just a world-class facility. You know, the resources that our owners have given us are absolutely, I mean, they're second to none. Uh, you've seen the stadium that we play in, um, this, this complex here with the locker room, the facility they're building over here with the 1,500-seat stadium, putting in another six turf fields. Um, it, it's it's just get, gets better and better. So the ownership group came in, we still stay with the Wizards. We're still the Wizards, we have heritage, we're moving forward, we're accomplishing great things, but we know who we are yeah. and where you come from. We got out of Arrowhead and moved to uh, a new, uh, well it wasn't actually a baseball stadium. It, it's not so much that the pitch was bad because the, the, uh, the grounds crew were phenomenal in the way they arranged it and set it all up and they covered up the base pads and everything. It was a great field. But the ambiance in the stadium was terrible because you'd have the pitch, but because the stadium's set up for baseball, some of the stands were way out there. So you were 50, 60 yards removed from any of the people that were, that were there cheering. And they, they built this amazing stadium for us. And once the stadium was built, uh, it was just night and day change. It was unbelievable. When the new owners bought the team, they embraced the fans that yeah. the previous ownership really hadn't done. And then they built this stadium. 
And when you Beautiful build a stadium. stadium and you let the fans design one end of your stadium with a bar, yeah. Yeah. literally our fans had a hand in designing the stadium. That's amazing. And so when we do that, you see the involvement you get. And now you have all these people that are engaged. It's yeah. insane. Our owners, through social media, through behind the scenes meetings, they involve us in decisions that lead to a better product on the field. The community has really enveloped this team and it's it's uh, definitely something to be proud of and uh, I'm proud to be part of it. I really enjoyed my time here and uh, now, you know, when I come back and when I see the new stadium and exciting crowds, it's just, it's nice to see that we've built something and now it's going in the right direction. The one thing that blows my mind, you're in the heart of America here, right in mm -hmm. the middle of the country. But when you go to a soccer game, you feel like you're in any stadium in Europe. Yeah. And uh, that's how good the atmosphere is, and, and, and probably better than a lot of stadiums. I've been to Ajax Arena, I've seen the Bernabeu in, uh, in, in Madrid, and our stadium, it, you know, it's not that size of those, yeah. but quality-wise, it, it nobody can hold a candle to it. And what's even better yeah. is it's in the United States and it's in Kansas. Team in a, in the world is trying is trying to develop young players to, to, to other academies. So you know uh, how difficult that is. Sometimes you're successful, sometimes you're not. That part has been good in the country. We've done a very good job of developing players. We've changed some things, like anything else along the way, um, and I think we continue to develop good players. The, the pros got to have an all-star game. We figured uh, the kids that we play that we help coach uh, should also have one. So this is actually our U14 academy team playing in a game against an all-star team made up of three kids from each of the seven affiliate cities we have throughout the Midwest. What, what has now started to happen with places like Kansas City is that kids that were getting to the point where they had to make a decision whether it was football or basketball or baseball and they had other options, right, they're sticking here because now there's a dream. So the goal is that these guys and our affiliation with these clubs will allow us to better scout the talent within our region. There's an opportunity for them to play in a place like this or, or anywhere else around the league, which a lot of kids growing up didn't have. A lot of these parents that you see of these kids, they didn't have that option. No. Uh, these kids have that option now. So we're seeing them now um, more determined to stay in our sport. And we've got a staff of about four people. Um, and that, that's something we're looking to do is continue to increase our staff and, and just make this uh, the, the best academy in the country. I think the league has gotten better because the American players have gotten better. U.S. soccer, there's a proposal on the table and our ownership group put it together with them and, and they're looking to bring the National Training Center here for United States soccer. So basically referee development would be here, coaching development, um, and, and U.S. soccer, all the national teams would have their training center here in Kansas City. Can we build a product uh, on the field and can we advance our players uh, so the level of the games are, uh, are similar to European. Um, yeah, we're going that way, but it's going to take some time. I mean, we're laying the foundation here and we're in the grassroots of this here in, in Kansas City, as are all the MLS academies. And so I feel, you know, with what we're doing, once we get our staff in place, you know, we're currently working on a three-year plan, a five-year plan, and a ten-year plan for our academy. And, uh, you know, and, and, and Peter Vermees, our coach, he always talks about the academy being the lifeblood of the, uh, of the, of the, of the club. We're, we're here to make an announcement today, and that is that um, Eric Palmer Brown sitting next to me on my left. Um, we are assigning him to a, uh, a, a full professional contract out of our academy. Uh, he's now the uh, youngest academy player being signed into the league at the moment.